<laughs> That's amazing. The dogs, the dogs, the dogs. Is that even a real story? That's a fact. This is complete nonsense, right? Read a book. I guess you are kind of artistic. Incredible. What are you even talking about, man? Go for broke. I don't even know what that means. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Keep her going, baby. <laughs> sir, what's up? Howdy. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> Not too much. Sir, sir, I'm just trying to get something to eat. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? I forget what it's from, but... I think it's uh, it might be like to catch a predator or something like that. But this creepy old man uh, is basically about to get Chris Hansen in a McDonald's, and uh, his response was instead of like "I'm a creep" or "You got me," he goes, "Sir, sir, I'm just trying to get something to eat." And you're like, "What is this guy trying to do right now?" Just absolute butthole. So this is an odd start to the uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, so welcome back, <laughs> episode three. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that so, came, I don't know why that came to mind. Sorry about that. Sometimes Scott's brain doesn't work quite right. Mm. We'll uh, get him back on track here. And I'm back. <laughs> All so, right. <laughs> so what do we have today for us, Scott? I actually wanted to start uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently today. I wanted to start with some shout outs. Uh, we've been getting a lot of love on Instagram, so I just wanted to show some love back to uh, one is just an interesting comment we got on one of our pictures. And the second was uh, basically a little bit of feedback on how we've been doing so far. Um, numero uno, though, is I'm going to give a huge shout out to Nate's Instagram one. Uh, Nate Instagram one. And the reason being is he, uh, he actually gave us kind of a cool factoid. He called it. He said, here's a fun factoid. Emperors of China kept pugs as lap dogs and treated them to all the luxuries of Royal life. Sometimes the pampered pooches were given their own mini palaces and guards. And that sounds awesome. I mean, that that's pretty legit if that's true. But, Greg, I think I'm going to need a pretty serious fact check on this. Yeah. I'm going to need some references. Um, <laughs> yeah. G- give, me a, give me a couple references because uh, this could be complete bullshit. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Nate, I appreciate the feedback, but you need to show me something, man. That could be complete BS. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you th- what do you think about that, Greg? Uh, it, so- it sounds yeah. like it could be true. It- it's it's up in the air at this point. Oh. I mean, it doesn't sound right, but I don't know enough about pugs to dispute it. So yeah. or or the emperors of China, like back in whatever oh, time no, period I know that a is. Ton about them. Oh, okay. So you know they had pugs or pugs. I you know actually I'm starting I, to I'm starting to break why this did down. You believe that? Wait, I'm starting to break this down. Uh, in that movie with Will Ferrell and Zach Galifianakis, the one uh, where they're running against each other, it's a political movie. Uh, one of the campaign ads that Will Ferrell, oh my God, he, I forget what it's called. The campaign? The campaign. Yeah, perfect. Brain's almost there. <laughs> but uh, one of the campaign ads is basically like, I have golden retrievers. I'm American. You have pugs. You're Chinese communist. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm starting to think that this might be a little bit fake. Ooh. I'm leaning towards real. Oh, okay. So you think that the Will Ferrell movie reference in the yes. campaign was also Inspired. supported by facts? <laughs> the Chinese own pugs. Yeah. <laughs> the, the movie came before the bug. Uh, keep going. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. We'll, we'll see. All right. But uh, comment, comment if you guys get a chance. If you have any sort of um, knowledge on this topic, because. I'm not going to waste the time to look it up. I just thought it was an interesting comment. Uh, But the second shout out I wanted to give is to R connect number seven. And uh, she gave us a fucking awesome shout out, um, which is, which is amazing to me just because I'm a huge fan of the podcast. My favorite murder. Uh, It's hilarious. My fiance loves it. Anytime we go on a road trip, we, we listen to them. Um, But uh, R connect number seven said that, Uh, And sent us a a little post saying, hey, anytime I'm on a road trip, I'm going to listen to Barkology podcast instead of My Favorite Murder. And that means a lot. I mean, that means we're doing at least one thing, right? I think. Yeah. Don't don't look at me. (laughs) Um, So a huge shout out to her and nothing against My Favorite Murder because I listen to you guys all the time. They're fucking hilarious. Um, But that just made me feel good. I mean, three three 
three episodes in and we're getting shout outs like that it gets me pretty pumped bud so mark of the shark pinsky okay ooh, mm-hmm. uh at wiener dog olive wiener dog on olive on oh yeah we, we featured uh olive a couple times in yeah so just an all-around awesome little wiener dog um total cutie and a couple of pics of of hers are on our instagram so but don't believe me. Yeah, I can check uh, it out for yourself. Yeah, check Wiener Dog Olive out. I mean, honestly, they don't have a ton of followers. But if you are a fan of, um, uh, how do you pronounce it's It's a dachshund, right? I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the technical name. But a dachshund? A dachshund. But it's, it looks like it's spelled like dash hound, dash hound, but it's a dachshund. A dish, a dish hound? I don't know. I think it's probably German, man. Yeah, you're German. You're looking at me <laughs> like I speak the the native tongue. All right, but either way, this is definitely the best wiener dog page I've ever seen. The pictures are legit. I mean, they're all like 4K quality. Um, she has a big big brother uh, that they just got, who's a, a Swiss Swiss Mountain Dog, mm-hmm. Swissy, a Swissy. Um, and it's cool because Olive is black and brown, but she probably weighs like 10 pounds. And then um, Oakley is the other dog. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. (laughs) Just a little baby. Uh, But then uh, Oakley is the the Swissie's name. And as a puppy, they were like the same size. And now he probably weighs like 100 pounds. (laughs) But they're almost like exactly the same with the way their coats are colored. So it's cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. One's real big. One's real little. Oh, actually, I have a, I have a funny story about Olive. Uh, we were down, uh, we were doing like a ski trip with, with Mark the Shark Pinsky, um, and it was right when they got Olive, probably within the first like week or so. So if you can imagine a, a little wiener dog that's only eight weeks old, it's about the size of a water bottle. I mean, it couldn't be smaller. Mm-hmm. It's dangerous to walk around this thing because you could step on it and kill it immediately. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. But... Uh, at one point during the weekend that we, we, were, we were down there for the little vacation, the long weekend, they completely lost Olive. Literally, we're like, we, we thought it like walked off the deck and like died and disappeared. And, and like just, a hawk picked it up and dragged oh, it away. That's just barbaric. Pretty, yeah, it would have been on us for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, after like 45 minutes of looking, they found her hammocked. In the sheet of the bed, hanging off the edge, huh. uh, to the point where like the dog was completely asleep, didn't hear us calling for her, just taking a nap, wrapped up in the edge of the sheet on the bed. Like how ridiculous Swinging is that? Around. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it was so small though that like we looked through the bed that you would you couldn't you find couldn't her. She find was her. so tiny. Um, she was just having a little nap ski. Oh. <laughs> so uh, Dude, how do wiener dogs run? Do they do well? I've got to imagine they're not like the Usain Bolts of the Dog Olympics, man. I picture them a lot like a caterpillar. (laughs) (laughs) They scrunch their body up and then kind of extend outwards as they they go. But less efficient because they only have four legs. Oh, Oh, man. I love that reference, though. The caterpillar is good. Uh, I just remember that caterpillars have more than four legs. (laughs) Do they they have legs? They don't have legs. Hmm. Caterpillars definitely do. No, you're thinking centipede. I don't know. Hold on one minute, Greg. Ooh, sorry about that. We might have lost connection. I don't know. I think we're good now, though. Let's hope so. Where were we at? Uh, caterpillars. Oh, yeah. Okay. Caterpillars Actually, do not have feet. They have little tiny pr- no. prongs? No. I don't know what you'd consider. No. Though. Okay. Centipedes. Yes. They have legs. Okay. Okay. You want to know a fun fact about caterpillars? Yeah, actually, I do. Okay, so... They turn into butterflies. They do turn into butterflies, but the cocoon is truly like a metaphor for life, Greg. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> because him. because um, if you are to help a premature butterfly come out of the cocoon, its wings aren't strong enough and developed to fly. So it's kind of like a metaphor for life in that you have to kind of go through these challenges and push yourself to a certain point where you're able to fly. Once you get out, you don't need people to help you or give you, you know, help here and there to, to make it. And all right. Yeah. All right. I'm getting too inspirational, getting too inspirational. No, that's it. That's it basically. So, Oh, okay. But don't ever help it out of the cocoon. That motherfucker will die. immediately. (laughs) That thing will die immediately. Um, all right. Scott was that one kid and, elementary school and the butterfly theme project who opened his cocoon up prematurely i'm still scarred obviously (laughs) 
the thing died <laughs> immediately fell on the floor some kid scratched his chair over it dead didn't happen but you could see yikes. how it could have <laughs> yikes um all right so cool uh i just have a couple other things that happened to me this yeah, last week let's hear it uh so number one man uh greg and i both go to the same dog park it's pretty cool it, it, i'll try to describe it you can add in whatever you think is necessary but it's basically a pond in the middle it's all fenced in but then there's maybe a quarter mile loop around mm -hmm. the pond maybe that's, a little less a stretch but either way you get the idea it's like, like an eighth of a mile yeah it's like a circle walking path around this pond uh typically it's super muddy especially when it's you know it got warm last week so the snow is melting it was like super muddy but <clears throat> i went there with my dog leo notley my dog's leo notley uh, we're walking around. We did a couple laps, and there's this one fucking asshole dog. You know, there's always this always one, one asshole dog there. And uh, it kept trying to hump everybody. I mean, me, Leah, get it. the dogs. Yeah, I mean, it, Red, Red Rocket out the entire time. Oh. Like, even when it wasn't humping, it was just slinging that thing across the ground. It's working with that loaded gun. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I always I, say, don't bring a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> don't know how that applies but <laughs> it does keep going all right so uh at one point though uh there was like 15 dogs in a circle like they're all just like it, dogs. they're like intermingling like having a great time blah 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 and this dog's trying to fuck the shit out of all of them just like did it did it did it <laughs> like going to town and uh it got to my dog and leah kind of like snapped at him oh, yeah. and then um it was like okay, whatever. Went to the next dog, started humping this next dog, and it was uh, it, it was definitely like an eighty pound pit bull, and this dog was probably like forty pounds, just like a little asshole. And it what, starts. Do you know what kind of dog it was? It was it was a mutt. It looked kind of uh, like it looked kind of like a retriever. So like it looked, it didn't look mean or anything, um, but it just like was, the testosterone was, was through the just roof. Just trying to <laughs> yeah, just trying to get trying it to get in. a little something. Uh, but it a started just started just humping this other and there was like a 15 dog skirmish every dog was like arr, 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 and you know like mo freaking out yeah like mo none of them are really like biting each other but they were all just like it was like chaos the you know and i'm like holy shit so i like i reach in i had my gopro with it in, because i was taking some pictures but i had it on like a handhold handheld mount type thing and i have it here like on the table lanyard type thing yeah or... yeah so you guys can check it out on the youtube video once we upload it but i had it in my hand and i go to kind of oh. like shoo leah my my dog out of there because leo was in the mix utley was out like you know playing with playing with the butterflies like a mile away because he has no brain um but i went to like shoo leo away and a dog out of nowhere like went to bite me and bit the gopro off of the handheld that i was using it with and literally what like i had like look i have like one little hole in my finger oh, gotcha yeah, it got me a little bit but the gopro literally saved my life <laughs> saved my hand at least and um it, it, it chomped it clean in half as you can see it's just like broken off and i haven't shown greg yet but the gopro still works we but, hope but the display screen is like smashed in you can kind of see how it is and there's oh, yeah. like there's like dog bites on the GoPro, so the GoPro saved my life. So those things are saved pretty durable. Life, <laughs> it saved my hands. It's extreme. Say it stayed from my fingernail. Um, but, yeah. So how crazy is that though? That's not good. <laughs> yeah. I don't, how do you even prevent that? It was just it was like a it was one of those situations where like all the dogs were like realistically they're like barking and stuff because they're like stop fighting you know like shut the right. fuck up. But uh, this one dog just like panicked on me trying to get my dog like out of the skirmish and uh I just, leave her I, alone yeah it was probably my fault you know you <laughs> oh, don't, don't get into that stuff you get bit by dogs a lot <laughs> no i have once before but it didn't scare me away oh, i get bit by dogs a lot why i don't know you're so timid i just i don't I, they just <laughs> like to bite me i just kind of laugh it off yeah, yeah. sometimes like, it hurts sometimes it doesn't but are they a lot of little dogs or big dogs oh little dogs love to bite me yeah yeah well they, they're just not, i just kind of not trained them. properly for the most part right i just kind of let them yeah i did get bit by a couple of big dogs yeah i get bit that by a german fun. shepherd once i still have the scars it was oh fucked yeah up. i got a bunch of scars yeah scars. i don't know why I'm not like mean or anything. There's just something about your face. Just I want to punch you. <laughs> so don't bite me, huh? Just want to bite you, bud. Well, um, dogs will be dogs. So yeah, that was my uh, that was my weekend. But all the, all the dogs were fine. It was just kind of like uh, you know one of those situations where everybody's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Everybody's a little mm -hmm. bit a little bit heated. Blah blah blah. Um, but that is actually 
I have one other thing that I want to talk about, but let's get into the stories and I'll throw it in at the end. How's that sound? No, I want to talk about it now. You do? All yeah. Right. All right. So I'm not going to mention the dog's name, but uh, one of a friend of a friend's dog, uh, beautiful, beautiful black lab. It's now, I think, like four years old. But if you looked at it, it almost looks like it's like six months old. So it, mm. it's got stunted growth. And I'm going to tell you why. So as a puppy, like this family is kind of granola, meaning that they think like dogs shouldn't eat meat. Like they wanted to like feed it vegetables and fruits all the time. Hashtag vegan cat. <laughs> vegan cat. Yeah. Dude, where'd you hear this? I, uh, I don't know. It's a, another reference somewhere. I can't remember what it is. That's a real thing. Oh, I know. I know it's a real thing. I've heard it too. I can't remember where. Um, so this dog from the age of a puppy, like right after puppy chow, maybe even during puppy chow, they would feed it fruit all the time and like fresh fruit, like fresh fruit. So, <laughs> so give me a, a daily diet of this dog. Maybe like a little bit of puppy kibble, you like know, enough, some puppy chow. I think enough food probably. I don't, I don't think they're starving it, but then they just like as snacks instead of like treats, they would give it fruit. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Lots of fruit, though. Like, so, a, like, like a pineapple or like a uh, yeah, like lots of little like a little or cir- circle of pineapple. You know those cute little but like twenty times like twenty times a day though. Like a full pineapple. So it ends up being like a full pineapple a day. Yikes. Um, but what ended up happening was this dog was getting wasted every day. Like their a, their digestive system is basically like a tube, as far as I understand it. I don't know the anatomy of a dog, so don't judge me. But the way like the fruit was fermenting and being digested, the dog was basically like getting drunk every day. So like it was super lazy and like they couldn't really get it to like train huh. it to like do much. And it stunted its growth to the point where it's like perfectly fine now, thank God. But uh it just it, it's like half size. It's like a six month old, but it's four years old. So it's just a wee tiny little puppy. Yeah, thing. it just like it stunted its growth they, for some reason. I mean, we give Oliver vegetables all the time. I think that's fine, like, but it, it had something to do with the fer- fermentation process in the fruit. Huh. <laughs> weird, that's right? That's weird. So, so dogs can't eat fruit. I think a little bit's fine. What about like an apple? I don't know, man. They're feeding it like like real rich stuff though like blueberries raspberries blackberries like just all day everything. long yeah the cantaloupe just feel like thinking that that's like a healthier snack than like a peanut butter bacon strip or yes. whatever that is yeah so so caution when you feed your dog a pineapple absolutely yeah no we give oliver and here's a, a good tip for you um we give oliver carrots a lot mm-hmm. just like the baby carrots we always have a bag around organic of course dog eats better than i do <laughs> yeah. um but it you know when a lot of people come over, they always want to give your dog treats. Mm-hmm. So instead of just loading this dog up on biscuits, yeah, we just keep the the bag of carrots out, and then this way they can just give them a bunch of carrots, and, and it's, it's not right. nearly as bad as giving them like a handful, of, <laughs> yeah, whatever, of whatever treats that they're there. <clears throat> no, that's that's a good that's a good practice because Leah still gives our pups whatever the fuck they just want any kind of yeah, type of food yeah, but no that yeah. so i think we mentioned that greg's uh golden retriever is like 83 pounds 85 pounds something 80, like 85, that. yeah but like a year old i mean he's pretty thick that was a big boy yeah but he used to be like 95 yeah he's a little overweight he was growing pretty fast so it's he, good that you got him on the carrot diet he hit like 90 at let me think here Maybe like seven months. He was 90 pounds. Now yeah. his mom was 65 and dad was 85. Yeah. So, so he's breaking dad like the two, both of their weights mm-hmm. at seven months. <clears throat> so, well, A, we had no idea how much to feed him. Probably we're feeding him too much because mm-hmm. you read the back of the bag and that's just like, give him half a bag every time you feed him. <laughs> oh, well, that's wrong. <laughs> sure. Um, I'll try that and see what happens. So we cut his food back a little bit, switched him over to adult food mm-hmm. shortly thereafter. Actually mixed it, but whatever. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, and he lost uh, about five pounds. Which is a lot when you're, like, growing like yeah, that. Yeah, which is a significant amount, but he looks healthier. He's, like, definitely... He looks better. Yeah, yeah. he looks he way big. better. He had, his booty was a little bit out of control. <laughs> it's like he's on that milkshake diet. Yeah. Oh, was he bringing all the boys to the yard? Oh, you know it. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing that you definitely shouldn't do that I know, especially with large breed dogs, like it, well, extra large breed dogs like uh, Great Danes and things like that. If you feed them too fast, they'll just grow to like full size in like oh, yeah. six months, and it'll fuck everything up. You yeah. got to avoid doing that. Yeah, we slowed them down. Cut them back. Got him back. 
All right, bro. We're getting into the stories. We've been rambling. Um, you're starting us off this week, correct? Are we doing the the Westminster Dog Show? We'll get into it at the end. I think we got after. to let's bang out the stories, and then maybe we can relate it into the uh, Westminster Dog Show. Yeah. That okay. real formal looking thing. I just get worried because every time we try and do something like that, we always forget. But that's okay. I got Let's it marked. It I got it marked, bud. Highlight it. Are um, you going story first or me? You, you're starting us off this week. so. All right. So I've got a great story about a Yorkshire Terrier. But what I'm going to do is tell you just a little bit of uh, facts about the uh, the Yorkie, if you Ooh. will. Just I to like give that. You a, Mixing it a up little, a bit. A little pretense to the, the – a little education to this. So the Yorkshire Terrier is a small dog breed of terrier developed during the 19th century in, guess what, Yorkshire, England. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> Couldn't have guessed it. Kind of like the Newfoundland. Uh, I wonder where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, its maximum size is about seven pounds. So these are little guys, right? So the Yorkie originated in Yorkshire, a country in northern England um, in the mid-19th century. Um So workers from Scotland came to Yorkshire in search of work and brought with them several different varieties of small terriers, Mm -hmm. bringing most of the Yorkshire terriers. Um, This is actually kind of funny. So these people basically worked in cotton and wool mills. Okay. And someone was detailed saying a Mrs. A. Foster quoted that, Most of these breeds originated from nearly all ignorant men. So we have very undetailed (laughs) records of where these dogs actually (laughs) came from. Somebody was like, let's scratch the formal record and let's put in that they just came from ignorant men. From (laughs) some unknown time period. Nearly all ignorant men. (laughs) There may have been one or two, two bright ones in there. <laughs> Scribbled some notes down on a piece of paper and, and then called it a day. Nice. Um, nice. So the breed comes from three different dogs, a male named Old Crab, a female named Kitty, and another female whose name is unknown. Ooh. I can see what uh, Miss Foster here was uh, <laughs> yeah. was saying. Mm. Where do you get a name like Old Crab? Or what was it? Why do you name a dog Old Kitty? Old Crab. <laughs> Old Crab, my dog. Well, how about one of our good friends down in uh, down in Texas? I think I mentioned him previously in one of the episodes, but he, um, his girlfriend. I don't know if they're still together, so I apologize if I'm bringing it up, man. Uh, his girlfriend had a cat, and she named the cat Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds legit to me. Huh? <laughs> but like, yeah. Hey, this is my Yorkie, Old Crab. <laughs> Hmm. (laughs) all right continue sorry Um, so one of the most well-known yorkies is Mm -hmm. huddersfield ben okay so he was a famous dog his portrait was painted by george earl and in the in in 1891 an authority on the breed wrote Huddersfield Ben was one of the best stud dogs of his breed during his lifetime and one of the most remarkable dogs of any pet breed that ever lived. And most of the (laughs) show specimen of the present day have one or more crosses of his blood in his pedigree. A show winner, Huddersfield Ben, quickly became the type of dog everyone wanted and through his puppies has defined the breed and the part of the breed as we know it today he's still referred to as the father of the breed oh shit okay so he's a pretty bad at, i mean he's a cool oh yeah he, I mean, he had he's a, the one he's the one i'm not positive but you know that really old painting with the really fancy looking dog yeah i think that's huddersfield <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's him for everyone out there thinking of any old painting with a dog in it it's huddersfield. it's him <laughs> it's him 100 <laughs> percent I can see it. Yeah. All right. So wrap. Uh, you know, I know. I know enough about the Yorkie. Okay. You have any finishing so they points? came to America. Yada yada yada. Cool. Their coat is, uh, well, it's pretty short. Yeah. Hypoallergenic. Ooh. To you, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, yeah. Hyperallergenic. So if you have allergies. Yeah. The Yorkie. Pretty good option. That's your cool. dog. Cool, cool, cool. Um, health. Ton of health issues. Okay. I'm assuming genetic defects. Oh my. 
Good luck. Mm-hmm. A lot of, so, yeah, a lot of roll of the die there. Um, but some notable dogs are the champion Osmillan, which I don't know. He's pretty famous, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. They're not important uh, other than Huddersfield. But one who is pretty notable was Smokey. Okay. Smokey the war dog. Hero of World War II. And that brings me to my story. What a connection, folks! <laughs> like that transition? Yeah, that I transition that was for a while. Greg has been literally sitting at his office, in his office, all day working on that transition. Continue. That might be 50% true. <laughs> You're not not right. <laughs> so, the little Yorkshire Terrier was found in an abandoned foxhole, dirty and hungry, in the New Guinea jungle. Ed Downey, who did not have a liking to dogs, discovered her as he passed her on the passed her on to a sergeant named Dare. So this dog's just chilling in a foxhole, dirty and disgusting. Somehow still alive. Somehow in still New alive. Guinea, like just hanging out. Just okay. Middle of World War Two. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, got to be malnourished. What would you say their average weight oh. was about seven pounds? Yeah. Yeah, so probably coming in at a three, three and a half, hey, maybe. Is that his fighting weight? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't Cut, know cutting weight. <laughs> cutting weight. Big fight going on. Uh, so he found her in this foxhole, and he passes her on him. Yeah, him. Sorry. On to Sergeant Dare. Okay. That couldn't be a more badass name. Yeah, ever. that was my name. Yeah. So Dare, who needed money in a poker game, sold the dog to Corporal William Wayne in March of 1944. The, t- the two Australian pounds, well, four two Australian pounds, excuse me. So that's about $6.44 in American back then. Quick conversion. Like that's a, it. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I did that in my head, too, by the way. <laughs> is that, it's is a it, lot of money. Is it? Okay. Well, in today's dollars. Gotcha, gotcha. The Sorry. Case. The conversion rate has changed. So Wayne, a 22-year-old Ohio native, named her Smokey, and the two spent the next 18 months together in combat. The Holy sh- How does he... Sorry to interrupt, man. Go ahead, yeah. 18 months? Yeah. How does a Yorkie survive in combat? I don't know. It gets even worse. Okay. So un- unlike official war dogs, Smokey did not receive a balanced diet formulated for dogs or veterinary services. So... Smokey was basically living on shared rations of Wayne and an occasional can of Spam. Ugh. Right? That's probably like a delicacy, though, during World War II if you're a dog. Oh, you're yeah. like, give me that Spam, oh, motherfucker. Loved it. Loved it. So, <laughs> amazingly, uh, Smokey was never ill despite, the, despite these harsh conditions. Okay, cool. So, both Wayne and Smokey survived 12 combat missions, 150 air raids, and a typhoon. Yeah, this is mind blowing. <laughs> this is absolutely mind blowing. It's blowing my mind. Yeah, <laughs> it's talking so small. Just yeah. carry, carry him around in your front pocket, basically. Yeah. Okay. Just like carrying him around in his backpack, just doing who knows what in war. I feel like it's like Lord of the Rings, and in the whoever's carrying this dog around is like Gollum. He's like my, my precious, oh. my precious, and like never le- lets the dog out of his sight, which is probably seven why it's dogs, right. but one to rule them one all. To rule them all. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> so, Smokey was awarded eight battle stars, one notably. Come here, Lee. So, one for a notable feat as she performed, helped, as her performance. Wow. Sorry, this is terribly written. Uh, so, she performed, helped, saved the lives of more than 250 men and 40 planes. So, thanks to her small size, in January 1945, a communications cable was urgently needed to be run 70 feet through a pipeline. Underneath oh, an airway ooh. in Luzon. I think I know what's going to happen. Yep. Hold on real quick, Greg. Sorry to interrupt. i got to let the pooch out. Happens every I'm time. I'm just going to keep reading. Yeah, you keep reading. Okay. I'll, I'll be so back quick. The pipe was only eight inches in diameter and was filled with dirt, mud, mold, you name it. Probably disgusting. So not having any proper equipment, the men pinned their hopes on Smokey to solve the problem. They tied a kite string to a collar, which was used to thread the wire through the pipe. So Wayne coaxed Smokey forward by calling her to come to the other side of the pipe. And so obviously Smokey was hesitant at first, but made her way through the communications network. 
So made her way through the pipe, and the network was established. So what you missed was they basically tied a string to the dog and sent this dog through this eight-inch pipe, <laughs> 70 feet. Holy shit. Right? Yeah. That's awesome. That's to, so cool. Yep. So that she established a communication line. Um, and if it wasn't for her bravery, dozens of, dozens of men would have had to basically dig a trench, putting themselves in, in you know, in way of enemy attack yeah. and gunfire. Um, so that's pretty dope. How do you think they like, do you think they like old school put like a stick on her back with like a little piece of spam in front of her to get her to like run through the pipe? How do you trick her to do I'm that? 100%, right I'm 100%. I'm 100% sure that's exactly how that went down. Uh, perfect, perfect. Wasn't there. I'm not a first person account by any means. That's but, how I would have done it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would have lost World War II for us hands yep. down with that one move. So by that one feat, save 250 men and potentially 40 planes. That's fucking sick. Yeah. So you. that's pretty, pretty shadow. Notable. Wait, smoke or shadow? Smokey. 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 Sorry. Smokey. I'm just thinking of all the most badass dog names. Shadow. Smokey. I think Smokey's, Smokey's up there. <laughs> um, so Wayne, who's been do- around dogs all his life, credited Smokey with saving his life. While on a tank landing strip near the Philippines, under attack from enemy planes, Smokey guided Wayne to duck the fire and hit eight that hit eight men next to him uh he called her an angel from a foxhole that's fucking sick right is that the end no I keep oh going. okay oh, okay yeah you ended that and i thought it was over yeah a little dramatic pause yeah <laughs> okay yeah, the suspense is building, building. Right. not only was Smokey a hero saving lives from the enemy she helped make life's a little bit easier for those going through difficult times. Wayne had noticed what a strong and uplifting effect she had on her troops. With her presence and personality, um, she often was found chasing after butterflies that were larger than her. I, I'm out. We got a lot of butterfly talk today. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not planned. That is funny, though. So, where are they that they have butterflies larger than a seven pound Yorkie? I've never been to New Guinea. So it could be, I don't know. I'm just picturing like pterodactyl sized butterflies <laughs> just scooping men up. And... Oh my God, it could be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so, how much longer do you have, real quick? Sorry. How much longer? Well, does it matter? I'm going to let the dogs in. Go. Okay. Good God. Just do Can it. Can you believe this guy? It's like I need one hour from him. It's the worst. Sorry about him. So shortly after Wayne got Smokey, he was hospitalized with a dengue fever. Um, friends would bring Smokey to see him, and the, the nurses charmed her with her stories. Uh, sorry, this is just terribly written. I blame Scott for all of this. Um, so the nurses asked Smokey or Wayne if Smokey could visit other patients. During his five-day stay at the hospital, Smokey would sleep with Wayne at night and make rounds during the day cheering up other patients. Wayne began to teach her tricks like walking on a tightrope, riding a handmade scooter, and spelling her own name by picking up letters that Wayne called them out to her. Uh, in, in their downtime, Smokey performed her tricks to the entire troops with special services in the hospitals from Australia to Korea. So talented dog by 1947 about 700 dogs were donated by civilians according to the animal to animal planet Smokey earned the distinction of being the first therapy dog on record that's awesome right at the end of the war Wayne and the Yorkie doodle dandy Yorkie doodle dandy (laughs) continued to visit hospitals to help uh, recuperate soldiers back to home uh, Smokey retired in 1955 and passed away two years earlier in her sleep at the age of 14. Gee, 14? Yeah. That's a good life for yeah. a dog. Well, I was reading average lifespan for Yorkies is like 13 to 20. Oh, my God. That's even insane. Though, even though you mentioned there's like hundreds of health problems. Oh, yeah. You're like genetic defects. Like they are going down. Dude, and then you're like, but they live till about to 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Cool. Um, and so the... I, so Smokey has uh, about six memorials honoring her. Cool. That's it. That's the story. Smokey, you dirty bitch. Right? You That's dirty girl. Intense, you though. dirty girl. It's the first um 
What am I trying to say here? Uh, therapy dog. Therapy dog. That's awesome, though. That's um, kind of cool. Look at this picture. Let me Sorry, check you folks it, son. Can't see it here, but I'll, I'll post it. <laughs> you know what? I'm not a Yorkie fan, but this is like the coolest Yorkie <laughs> I've ever seen. She has this trophy in front of her that's about the size of it's herself. Got- and she's just like posting up on it, like yeah, I did all that shit. Standing up on her hind legs, yeah. one hand on this giant trophy that's like the size of her, and she's got this long hair that's like blowing back in the wind. <laughs> they definitely have a fan. In, like, <laughs> they have a fan on her. <laughs> she's wrapped in I don't know some sort of sh- like American flag shawl. It's pretty badass. Yeah. So I'll give her that. You know, I, I intentionally picked this story today because Greg was pissing me off earlier, and I was like, I'm gonna give him this Yorkie because it's gonna be mm-hmm. the worst mm-hmm. story of all time. Mm-hmm. Might be the best story mm-hmm. of all time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to give a, a quick shout out to two real life Yorkies that I know personally. Okay. Troy and Toby. Troy and Toby, what's up? Troy and Toby. So these are my, uh, well, girlfriend's parents and sister's dogs. Combo. Okay. Yeah, kind of thing. So Troy is this little tiny guy who's awesome. He just learned how to shake the other day. How old is he? Ooh, that's a good question. He's getting up there. <laughs> okay. He's a little bit older. Not quite as intelligent, guy. but coolest dog ever. Uh, full of energy, just loves you, loves giving kisses. And okay. then there's Toby, who's um, well, behavior's a little odd. Definitely been bitten by him a couple times. Um, loves to bark at everything that moves, and he's most um, notably known for eating poop. So he's uh, watch out for his kisses. That's you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, Oliver learned how to eat the diaper poop mm. from him yeah, yeah to some degree some degree <laughs> we can give him some some of the Oliver, he doesn't he likes to tiptoe around the uh, actual dog poop which yeah. is good but there's rabbit turds out there he's oh just gonna God, gobble yeah. them up deer poop oh anything. yeah those are like deer little uh, little tasty raisinets to him num 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 um, all right. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, that was a good, I liked how you did the, uh, breakdown of the breed beforehand. So we knew a little bit of what to expect, but, um, I'm going to apologize smoky. people. Smoky. We got to reread it. We got to read and retype these. Cause this was terrible. I know. I've been doing that with mine. Oh yeah. I'm not just reading it word for word. This is like the words are out of order. Here. Oh, I know Wh- whoever, I mean, I we're taking these from Google, so it's they, completely random where we're finding them, but I don't know how these are being published because the grammatical uh, errors are yeah, just absurd. Bad. They so, squished unlike official war dogs together as one giant word. <laughs> <laughs> you look, like, Scott, I've never seen this word before. I Please mean, help me. I, I, I'm trouble reading to begin with, but this is just this is just absurd. Yeah, I didn't least, even stand a chance. You at least got to skim through that. You right? did great, though, man. It didn't it's sound like, like you were screwing up. Right. It's like running in the Olympics with a broken ankle. Yeah. <sighs> God, done God. for no bueno no bueno um all right well great uh, no oh what i was saying was i, I liked how you kind of led into it with a breakdown of the dog breed a little bit kind of understood the temperament and what to expect but um smoky right smoky smoky i want to say shadow i don't know why but smoky exceeded all expectations Dude, and I'm there just... will never be a better yorkie past smoky no. oh, hands good down luck. hands down good luck what was it, like 150 airborne missions that you said something no. like that yeah you you mentioned that 12 combat missions and then how many airborne so he survived 12 combat missions 150 air raids air raids what is an air raid i don't even really know it sounds so like something that you and i couldn't there. do you're sitting there you're oh chilling. when you're getting bombs dropped and then on a bunch you. of planes oh. fly over your head and drop bombs on you i'm on the uh wrong side of the the wrong team on this what one. What do you think? He's just jumping out of planes? Yeah, I thought he was like yeah, I thought he was like an air trooper type no, thing. Sorry. Um <clears throat> and a typhoon. I don't know what's and, worse. I mean you're pretty fucked with all of I those, just, so it's incredible they just found this little guy in mm-hmm. the middle of the jungle. Was it a girl or a guy, I forgot. Sorry, I keep saying guy, but it's a girl. It's a girl. She's a survivor, keep on surviving. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right. I'm going to get into mine um, just because I feel like reading about it. All right. So, Greg. Scott. Here we go. All right. So my story is about a dog named Grigio. uh, And the title of. Papa Grigio. Oh, my God. Hang on. I have a hilarious reference. (laughs) And I think you know what it is. Uh, But Grigio was Father Bosco's guardian angel. And Grigio 
described by many as a German shepherd looking dog, probably a mix. Are you going to tell us who Father Boschko is? Yes. Okay. Let's shut up. Thank you, Greg. Uh, and uh, it's a shepherd looking dog, German shepherd looking dog, would appear out of nowhere to protect Father Bosco from anti clerical factions in Italy during the 19th century. So I'll tell you what that means. That yeah, I'll tell you what that means. Um, in the 1800s, Don Bosco, Father Don Bosco, and actually, inter- interestingly enough, one of our good friends went to Don Bosco prep school in New Jersey. Not sure. Right. There's got to be, yeah, Brian Wright. There's got to be some sort of relation. He makes a there. lot of mentions in this podcast. He does. I mean, fun. Yeah, we got to get him up here. Um, great dude. Great dude. Um, but uh, in the 1800s, Don Bosco is an Italian Roman Catholic priest and declared a saint 40 years after his death. He devoted his life to helping disadvantaged youth, but was hated by many. Who wanted him dead? So actually, initially, I forget. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bam, bam. But yeah, initially when I was reading this, I was like, <laughs> okay, so he's devoting his life to the disadvantaged youths, and people want him dead. I'm like, okay, we've got ourselves a uh, spotlight situation, like in Boston. Did you did you not get that initially, just from reading that? I'm not picking up what like spotlight, down. like all the all the priests, like fucking little kids. Oh. Sorry if I'm getting into this, people and. But it's a We're going down proven this, thing. We're yeah. going down this but like, l- listen to this sentence. He devoted his life to helping the disadvantaged youth, but was hated by many people, and they wanted him dead. Oh, so I mean, what do you think? As soon as you said Catholic Church, I went down that road. <laughs> oh I mean, I. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was just a given. I thought that's the way we were going with the story. The story gets better. All Does right? the dog eat him, or <laughs> like? <laughs> I'm hoping it's the only happy ending to this one. Get into it. I'll get into it. We can't. Don't don't uh, judge a book by its cover, Greg. Uh, all right. I so one all one evening in 1852, Father Bosco walked through the streets of Turin, uh, which is in northern Italy, and a big gray dog approached him. So think about like a mixed breed German Shepherd that's yeah, just like a monster Lee. of a dog. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and we're cartoons again. Uh, at first, the priest was scared, but quickly realized the dog was a friendly, was as friendly as he was gentle, and greeted him with a wagging tail. Always a good thing. You get a dog coming up to you with like tail between the legs or something. You're like, oh, get the fuck away, motherfucker. Is that Especially, what that means? I I don't know. It's it's probably why I get do you so be, much. <laughs> yeah. Do you befriend the dogs that want nothing to do with you? I try. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just don't. I respect your. I read the signs and then I just ignore them. <laughs> I just go in. He uses those same principles when picking up women. Yeah, not, that's great. <laughs> Sorry, though, that made you seem like a bad person. Yeah. Wow. Uh, skip that. He I doesn't. Thought, that was a lie. We, we were friends. <laughs> uh, all right. So the dog walked alongside Father Bosco. Uh, and when they arrived at the gate at his home, the dog was just like, all right, man, got you home. I'm peacing out. He just trotted away. So it's kind of like, hey, where did this dog come from, and why are you helping me get home? So the dog helped him home? Yeah. So once he got home, the dog followed him home. Then once he got home, the dog was like, all right, I'm out. Like Don, uh, oh, Don Bosco was like, home. come on in. And the dog was like, no, peace, man. I got you home. It's Getting all good. Home. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first of many encounters the two had when the priest would walk at night. Obviously, he's got a bunch of people hating on him. In 1850, I'm pretty sure you could kill endless amounts of people and be able oh, to like, yeah. get away with it dude lawless oh yeah law yeah exactly angelina jolie role do whatever you want whenever you want okay i know the movie lawless but angelina jolie's not in that but she's just lawless okay she doesn't follow the rules yeah she follows her own rules you don't follow the rules I man that sounded gay rules. nothing against any gays but just finish this. I'm finishing. I live to two gay people. I have a lot of gay friends. <laughs> just so people just, know. Just finish this. Um, all right. So, da, 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 the dogs who or the dog who Father Bosco named Grigio. And initially, when I was reading this, I thought um, Grigio was like uh, Pinot Grigio, like wine, like Pinot Grigio. I don't know, but I guess it just means gray. That's it. I thought it was gonna be cool when I looked it up. It just means gray. Why is the wine named gray? It's Pinot Grigio. I, that might it might not even be Italian wine. I really don't know what Pinot Grigio is, but either way, Pino, so Grigio would appear out of nowhere, then disappear on the uh, the priest safely reached his destination. On two occasions, Grigio fought off attackers by knocking them to the ground, 
And on other occasions, the, dog, the dog's fierce look alone and savage growls were enough to scare the mob of assailants away. So this dude, this dog is like, I don't know, who can we compare him to? Like, I mean, he's just a motherfucking Punisher. The, the, the Punisher of dogs, man. Holy shit! I mean, <laughs> you look at him, you're like, goo. I want nothing to do with you. I just picture this dog now with like the Punisher symbol, the skull, just like painted on his back <laughs> like his face no his face is just painted with this, the punisher skull seriously so he's pretty crazy um i know so, what oliver's gonna dress up as this halloween all right well you know he can dress up as the punisher but mm, probably won't do anything he's just kind of silly boy lick you a little bit <laughs> i'm gonna lick you away <laughs> uh so one night after father bosco is uh or one night father bosco was determined to go out to attend an urgent matter don't know what it has to do with probably something to do with all the kids again you know you can insinuate that something weird was going on i uh, went there <laughs> what i went there <laughs> you were there that night <laughs> but uh his mother so i'm guessing back in the 1850s um actually i think a common here's a fun fact i don't know if it's that true but a lot of people think like back in the 1700s and the 1800s human beings lived shorter like everybody's like hey people lived until they were 50 blah blah, blah. but it's not true it's because there was a larger amount of babies that died during birth. So, so it reduced so, the average age? Yeah, expectancy? so it reduced the average age, yeah. So I was about to say, like, his mom was probably, like, 40 and he was, like, 15 in this. I'm not buying that. Babies died all the time. Actually, there's a huge – there's a fucked up problem Dude. in today's society. Listen, listen, listen. There's a huge fucked up problem where um, specifically African-American women um, – babies and the african-american women are dying more in hospitals during childbirth and it's neglect of care so there's actually there's a an article i read where it shows that um if you have an actual like certified midwife come to your home you're more likely to survive and your baby's more likely to survive than in like a is general that, hospital is that just with the african-american population or is that I think with as everybody, but the Af as an African American population, I think the African African American women um, had like the least amount of care, so they'd have the higher chances of dying. I don't like any of those it's pretty of fucked that. up, right? Dude, um, you're pretty dark today. I'm just throwing in stuff that I read that may or may not be true. I don't so people believe, fa fact check me, fact check me. I don't believe the first people live the same age, but I definitely believe the second fact. Yeah, so fact check Yikes. it. Fact check it. We got Nate, and then we got both of my I, facts. I, you know, I don't believe this whole the average age life expectancy being the same. Babies were definitely Dude, dying sooner. They didn't have antibiotics. So, so you get a tooth infection, which they didn't have dentists. Oh, they just fall out or you die. Like, people are always just dropping dead left and right from yeah. tooth infections. Yeah. You get a small cut on your hand, you're dead. So you're supporting me, not you, on this. So you're saying that... Yeah, no, you no, die no. real quick. Yeah. You're yeah. wrong. No, the average... Oh, my God. Average life expectancy... Was shorter back then due to people dying sooner. Specifically, childbirth at death. Or child death at birth. Oh, my God. I just... I can't do this with you. All right. Just read Let's the keep story. reading. All right. Good God. Uh, do, 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 do. So, he was going out that one night. His mom was like, hey, don't go out, man. And as the priest approached the gate to leave, he saw Grigio lying in front of it. So he was at his house waiting. He knew he was going to leave. Uh, he was happy to see the dog, but Grigio was like, yo, motherfucker, you're not going anywhere. Like, so cut, let him leave? Yeah, he was like, no, you're not going anywhere. Um, dog wouldn't budge. Uh, Father Bosco tried to get past him. Uh, and then the priest's mother, of course, being like a good mom, was like, hey, uh, listen to the dog. It's smarter than you. He, he doesn't <laughs> want you to leave either. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She was probably screaming, classic Italian mother. Hey, don't you go out there. Okay, I can't. That was <laughs> Australian. Yeah, okay. Oh, God. Well, you know, classic Italian oh. mother was like, don't go out there. I just picture her screaming. Uh, so Father Bosco was like, all right, I'll stay for like 15 minutes, but then I'm going to go do what I need to do. Uh, but he found out that there were actually like a group, like a mob of men down the road, like waiting to kill him. They're like, hey, you know, this if you it. if you walk down this path, we're going to fuck you up and kill you. Um, so that was, you know, interesting to find out. I don't know how he found it out. It's just that the intuition. Yeah. I mean, the dog intuition, man. Um, so as long as Grisha was there to protect Father Bosco. Uh, when the day, like whenever danger passed, he stopped coming around. So like when father Bosco was like, Hey, 
you know, I don't have any enemies anymore. The dog should stop showing up. So it kind of like new. Is that my phone going off? What is that? Can you just finish the story? Yeah, sorry. I just keep hearing the vibration. Um, so for years, Grisha wasn't seen. After the Father Bosco was like, hey, I'm, I'm clean and clear, dog never showed up for years, like years. So the story started in 1852. Mm-hmm. All right. So one night in 1866, so 14 years later, uh, the priest went to visit a friend. He was walk down a, walking down a dark road. He remembered a couple of guard dogs were close by. And wish Grigio was with him just because like in 1850s, like you see a couple guard dogs. You're like, even though I'm a little far away, these dogs might fuck oh, me they're up. they're ready to go. Yeah, you know, they're all the times. High alert, ready You can't to control go. them, yeah. Um, you can, but. Unless you're, well, you can't if you're the, if you're the person owner, walking. Yeah. Well, the owner could, yeah. Um, at once, out of nowhere, a big gray dog appeared at his side. So this is 14 years later. This So Grigio popped out of nowhere. Uh, they headed to his friend's farmhouse, and when the two guard dogs came after them, Grigio scared them away. Thank God. Uh, they made it to the friend's house safely, and Grigio laid in the corner of the room while the priest and his friend dined. So he's just like, hey, I'm chilling in the corner. Oh, uh, the priest died? What? The priest died? No, dined. 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 Oh, dined. The sorry, died. sorry. So they were, he was dining with his friend. So Grigio. Grigio is hanging out just like watching them dine. Turn, turns up out of nowhere. Scares these bad, badass guard dogs away. Mm-hmm. And then just chills while, while they Like, I, I picture him hanging out in, like, an old-school uh, log cabin with a fire well, fire burning. Wrong. I'm thinking chapel, like a giant. Oh, yeah, you're like, probably He's a priest. We're in Italy where he's a priest. Mm-hmm. He's eating well. Yeah. This dude's fed. Yeah, so he's the, yeah, hanging out with his fat belly. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that little silly hat he's got on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so later, Father Bosco, after a little while, Don Bosco, he turned around. And he's like, I'm going to check out my dog friend. Um, turned around and Grigio gave, tried to give Grigio some food, and he was no longer there, um, which is pretty wild, right? This time he just, his, like, disappeared. Yeah. And, you know, initially he was like disappearing like crazy. He was like, hey, I'll walk you home, and then I'm bouncing. But this time he didn't trot away. The whole house was closed up, and this was the last encounter he had with Grigio. So this dog just fucking disappeared. So when I was reading this, I'm like, hey, was the dog actually there or did they have a door open? And the dog was like, I'm getting out of here. You know, it's it's hard to hard to think. But when Father Bosco asked to give an opinion on the nature of the gray dog, he admitted that the dog was a creature worthy of note in his life. So pretty important, like a su- substantial impression on the priest's life to that point. Hmm. Although saying that the dog was an angel uh, would have come off kind of weird and made people laugh. Nevertheless, he had to admit that he was not a common dog. Don Bosco often thought about the origin of the dog, and he admitted that he had been a true gift from Providence. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is the end of the story. Almost 100 years after Father Bosco's last encounter with Grigio, a dog fitting the description of Grigio was spotted outside the church where Bosco's casket laid. According to Brother Renato Salato, uh, the dog somehow managed to get inside the locked church and was crouched under the casket. When the casket was transported to another destination, the dog was seen following the van for several miles before disappearing into the wind. Hmm. The end. It's pretty pretty spooky. <laughs> it's pretty spooky, right, man? He's just so, like a ghost dog. He's like the shadow. Yeah, you got to think like vigilante. Yeah, you got to think though. At what point was it like? the real dog or the you know a premonition or something like that or was it a premonition the whole time I mean, or... you're getting real deep i i don't know that's what i would think dude yeah well like how is this dog surviving on the streets this whole and also time? if it's a giant german shepherd and like 14 years later it just appears out of nowhere you're like eh, probably dead this isn't like right. you, this isn't a yorkie lifespan you know what i mean you're right. like, eh, german shepherds might not live that long so that's uh that's the end of my story man do you like it yeah I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my cartoon now? Mm. Oh, oh, well. Who are you I'm looking up, Get uh, off your phone, bro. I'm looking up John Bosco here. Oh, no, uh, Don Bosco. Yeah. Oh, also John no. Don Bosco. Yeah, it was John Jeez. Bosco, and then Don yeah. was his nickname. Yeah. You're right. And he actually didn't seem like that bad of a guy. Didn't seem too creepy. Yeah, I don't He. Let me see here. Dedicated his life to the betterment of education of street children, juvenile delinquents, and other disadvantaged youth. So his teaching methods based on love rather than punishment. 
He I'm seemed gonna, like an all right guy. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, um, but there's a lot of sketch going on for years, son, for years. Um, all right, let's wrap this thing up. We've been, we've yeah, been going on. Yeah, we got? We got, uh, we got highs and lows. We can, what do you want to call them? Tops and bottoms? Are we bottoms? doing Westminster we Yeah, yeah we'll wrap it up. All right, so. Are we doing that? For I was you, excited for it. You're yeah. just skipping over it. So for, well, you, for anybody who doesn't actually tune in to the – annual Westminster dog show. All I wanted to do was comment on the winner because I'd never seen a dog Whoa. like this. What's up? Is that it? Yeah, oh yeah, I brought it up on the screen. Greg's looking at it right now. So this is how I would describe it. Greg, you can give me uh, your description afterwards. Uh, so the dog that won, it's the breed is a wire fox terrier. And it looks like every single, it looks like the, the elder in every single Japanese Kung, oh, Kung Fu movie. Yeah. So like it's like an old Asian guy with like a funky beard growing off of each side of his like mustache, and it's extra long. Doesn't he look like the elder in that? Or what do you it think it looks does, like? Does dude, but a, like an alien. But like kind of like an alien. alien yeah. Came and bred with the Chinese elder, <laughs> but the Asian was like real British and smoked a pipe. <laughs> Oh my god, that is absurd. That is absurd. But either way, it's a it's a terrier breed, kind of weird. It's it's a yeah, wire dude. fox terrier, which I thought a terrier would have been more wi- wiry. I'm wiry, um, but it's kind of curly. But it has like a real th- scroll actually, down. Probably. Actually, scroll down. On. scroll down. You want me to do it on? Yeah. Look at this thing. So actually, no. Actually, oh. picture number two. If you guys go to the um, I don't know the Westminster Dog Show web page. What's the uh, dog's name? Get dogs girl. dog name dog's name is king so pretty dope king oh yeah yeah but he actually now looking at the second picture he looks like one of those um like biker dudes that has a chin beard and a monster mustache growing Dude, out the sides it's that snout that's throwing me off yeah just poking that through it's snout a dog is like a foot long yeah, yeah it's not yeah, he does have a very long head Ooh. he's Ooh. real good for tongue punching bee holes sorry just got real inappropriate with it <laughs> all right so that's all i wanted to touch on was i've never seen a uh, fox a wire fox terrier but he just won the entire thing he beat out some like so he beat out a uh, sussex spaniel pretty cool the um britney which is like a typical dog that's a beautiful dog it's always in that's the a end good looking dog. yeah it's a good looking dog uh irish water spaniel pretty cool kind of looks like a um a golden doodle or something yeah or a labradoodle like a, like a black golden doodle. with with, with kind of like a perm uh and then also that's about it oh a couple other dogs there's a golden retriever in there somewhere Ooh, oh that's a sexy good golden, golden. <laughs> yeah. uh so check it out if He's you guys so haven't seen fancy. it see i know there was a little bit of um there were a few issues with a few dogs that uh got disqualified and i didn't read Steroids? into it might have been steroids. Uh, I don't know, man. They had some some sort of like rampant in the game. Some, <laughs> some sort of skin protectant. I have no idea. Um, so that's cool. But the last thing, do you want to? So highs and lows, man. Highs and lows of the week. We can just touch on it quick. But yeah, that's something we do in the beginning of the show. Do you want to touch on them now, or do you want to bang out? Um, I mean, my week was pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Not much excitement. I did grab a uh, Red Bull at a pharmacy, and some guy asked me, says. Ask me how much I'd like New York State. I just walked away. <laughs> I wasn't even going near that. So I that like, was that was the that was my week. Like I'm gonna leave you alone, yeah, sir. You're you're on your own with this um, one, bud. Don't really have a high. It was a pretty neutral week, but the uh the downfall is probably almost getting bitten by the dog at the dog park. Yeah, that was tough. Like literally I feel like my finger would be gone if it wasn't for the GoPro. And the GoPro, it still works. We're recording right now, but it uh I'm gonna probably question if it's uh, water resistant now because the front screen's cracked. So I'm assuming yeah, it's supposed to be tougher than that. I don't know. Dog bites? Who knows, man? But um, mm. so that was my low. But that's about it, man. So I think we're I think we're wrapping up. So tell the peeps <laughs> you're wrapping up. Tell the peeps where to follow us, man. Oh, I have no idea. This is your wheelhouse. All right. So on Twitter, follow us. I can do it. At you got it. At Barkology Podcast. Instagram slash Facebook. No, no, you read it oh. wrong. At Twitter. Or Twitter. <laughs> at Barkology Pod. Pod. They won't let you do a longer name. What are, your, what are your dogs doing down there? 
Leah's here. Leah snuck home. My oh. fiance just came in, so it sounds like the dogs are like making dinner right now. But it's my fiance just like... cooking us like a nice, <laughs> a nice uh, <laughs> chicken and mushrooms. Meal, yeah. Chicken it's and like, mushrooms coming up, some bud. Braised beef steak or something. All right, finish this out though. No, finish you this go. out. All right, so Instagram and Facebook follow us at Barkology Podcast. Spotify, just search Barkology Podcast. We're the number one thing. Pop us, uh, pop up and watch us or listen to us. Uh, the first three episodes are out. Um, Podbean, it's Barkology.Podbean.com. You don't need an account or anything. You just go on and listen. And YouTube, search Barkology Podcast. You'll see our little avatar. It's a yellow dog that says Barkology. So yeah. that's all. How do we get on all. Apple iTunes? Uh, we oh, we're going to be at, we're gonna be on an Apple podcast soon. Um, they... They, I think they have to listen to your first couple to see if it's Yo, like Apple. Get at I know us. Let's I, we started go. earlier this week and they are not get, getting back to us yet. But I think they're just making sure we're not, you know, screaming cunts and shit. Mm. Oh, c words. You just C-words. said it. Yeah, I think they're just checking to make sure. Out. Yeah, they're making sure it's nothing bad. Uh, but we should be up on Apple Podcast uh, next week by next episode. Oh yeah, baby. But love you guys. Love everybody. We gave shout outs to and Greg. Wrap us up. Wagmore, bark less, baby. Woo! See you guys.